This is part four of lower procedure number one, and we're going to cover right now the form three, which is used to record the Q method interview. Um, the Q method is a method to understand the value of actions on climate vulnerability in Timor Leste. So I'm going to go through some of the details in the form. You may remember that there are three forms that must be filled in. Form number one, one per suku. Form number two, which is for different rounds of focus group discussion or the Kovaka method. And form number three is for the Q method. And you're going to use this form, one form for each interview applying the Q method. This uh, Q method interview starts with a consent. But before we go in, in, into that, I would like to recall a few of the topics that we covered in part uh, three. And these hand-on recommendations are actually on the form, so if you're using the form, you will see them. First, privacy is necessary. Surveyors need to find a quiet place with a table and reserve 40 minutes to up to one hour for applying the Q method a survey form and this is a one-on-one -on -one interview it's you and the person being interviewed and it's very important that once you start that you have obtained the attention of this person during the whole hour or 40 minutes if you're a quick uh, surveyor uh, because you must complete all the questions that are in form number three if you do not fill any of the questions by mistake, by omission. The entire interview process is invalidated. So it's very important to stay all the way to the end and to obtain the cooperation of the person being interviewed. We also talked about the presence of people of authority during the application of the Q method. This is not desirable, even as observers, people who are seen by the in interviewee as a person of authority, uh, there's a very high chance that the answers will be biased. So surveyors are instructed to ask to be excused if people of authority insist on being present. Uh, there are, of course, some uh, exceptions. Uh, if there are family members present during the, the Q method interview, this is probably very difficult to avoid, uh, you need to evaluate whether it's desirable or, or not. If the person, a uh, family member present, represents a person of authority uh, who may be able to intimidate the interviewee, uh, then it, you're going to ask to be excused. But if you have children, young children, el elderly people who need the care of the person being interviewed at all times, then you you know, may choose to allow the person of other, the, the presence of other people. Gender sensitivity, attention to the prevailing unequal gender relationships in Timor Leste is also very important. You have been instructed about cherry picking, the need for picking up women sometimes, picking up men other times, uh, and having a, a good combination, a good diversity in your data set, in the people that you are actually interviewing. But gender sensitivity is very important. And finally, surveyors must not mix up the need for privacy with a permission for intimacy. And um, any uh, uh, form of harassment will not be tolerated. That we've talked about, we covered in the previous video. I just wanted to reinforce these points because they're very important. So Q method, very important. In section one of form number three in the, uh, containing the Q method uh, questions starts with the uh, consent. Uh, it's a one form per interviewee. Uh, it's a one-on-one -on -one interview and it's based on the so-called free prior informed consent or FPIC. And we need this explicit individual consent for all Q method interviews. This is mandatory. So you really need to ensure that. And you ensure that by reading the consent form out loud. And it starts like this. My name is, and you will say your name, 
always with a smile, yeah, and um, uh, being very open, looking the people in the eye, and you say, my name is so and so and so, I am a data collection surveyor, I am present here today on behalf of the non-governmental organization Yaya San Humanis Dan Innovasi Social, affiliated with a Netherlands-based organization called HIVUS. The Timor-Leste branch of NGO HIVUS is working in partnership with two international companies in a joint venture arrangement. These organizations are Antea Group, through their office in Belgium, and EBD Global Optimum, based in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Both companies are specialized in environmental projects in various parts of the world. So the joint venture Antea EBD Hivos is currently on contract with the United Nations Development Program under a climate change project uh, whose title is Safeguarding Rural Communities and Their Physical and Economic Assets from Climate-Induced Disasters in Timor-Leste. The project is funded by the Green Climate Fund or the GCF and it's registered as Funding Activity Agreement for Project FP109. The objective of the contract is to conduct a comprehensive hazard mapping and risk assessment and development of a risk model for Timor-Leste. It's very important that you get the name right, the name of the project that we are implementing. And in Tetum goes like this, Mapeamento abrangente sobre risco relaciona o clima, avaliação risco no desenvolvimento modelo risco climático ba Timor-Leste. I may not speak Tetum, but I think I understand. And that's what it is. And these are the institutions and organizations and companies involved in this mapeamento abrangente. Here goes the Green Climate Fund that's providing funding to the project. Here goes the United Nations Development Program uh, and their counterparts in the government. Uh, in particular, Proteção Civil uh, and also Ministry of Environment. And here are the three partners uh, in the joint venture, HIVUS, EBD Global Optimum, and Antea Group. In connection with mapping of climate hazards in Timor-Leste, the joint venture partners would like to know how specific hazards actually affect people in the sukus. They need to understand what these hazards are, what kind of hardships hazardous events impose on the community, on people, and their assets and what costs these events may have for the families and how people react to hazards. For that, they need to collect data on these aspects using a methodology called LOVRA. LOVRA stands for Local Vulnerability and Risk Assessment Methodology and includes two different methodologies. The first one is called COVACA, which stands for Community-Owned Vulnerability and Capacity Assessment. The second one is called Q method. The application of the COVACA approach includes a discussion with a focus with a group of SUCO residents on different topics relating to hazard events, their impacts and their costs. It, it also includes a walk together with SUCO residents when you have the opportunity to show important features of the SUCO and its infrastructures. The COVACA application took place yesterday. Today, we're applying the Q method. The Q method includes individual interviews with a few selected people lasting approximately one hour each. The interviewees will be asked to look at pictures and help us put them in order of preference. It is also a way of collecting data on people's preferences and perceptions of hazards, risks, and reactions, although we'll be asking a lot of detail on the person's livelihoods through the Q method form. The information will remain anonymous. We'll request for free prior and informed consent of the person being interviewed, but we'll not register the person's name in association with the form. We'll also like to stress that the participation in the LOVER survey 
in this suku and in any other suku is 100% voluntary. It does not include any payment in exchange for information. Participation is open to anyone, woman or man, as long as the person is over 18 and can confirm that he and she understood the conditions of data collection and is willing to provide information. So until this point, the consent form is the same for both uh, Q method and Kovaca method. Now, with the Q method, there's a catch. Uh, in the next slide, you'll see the specific part that is uh, specific to the Q method. So when you finally are with your interviewee for the Q method and you've read, you've read all the paragraphs for the, the uh, consent statement, you come to this part and you're actually repeating a little bit what has been said before, but this is important because you're stressing specific aspects of the Q method and you're actually addressing the person directly through this language. So let's read the last part of the consent form. The Q method includes individual interviews with a few selected people lasting approximately one hour each. And then you say, it is very important that we are able to complete all questions all the way to the end. So I need your patience. It is all the way to the end. You will be asked to look at pictures and help us put them in order of preference. This is a way for us to collect data on your preferences and perceptions of hazards, risks, and reactions. Although I will be asking you a lot of details of your own livelihoods, through the Q method form, the information will remain anonymous. I am hereby formally requesting your free, prior, and informed consent to be interviewed for the purposes of the LOVRA, as it has been explained to you just now. I will not register your name in association with the form. Having said that, you reached uh, the end of these explanations concerning the consent, concerning the cherry picking, uh, and concerning the uh, application of the preparations that you need to put in place for applying the Q method for. Now we follow on to uh, the last part, which is part five of the application of the LOVER interview. Thank you. LOVER methodology. Thank you. And the part four video. Thank you. Muito obrigada. The government of Timor-Leste is implementing, with the support of the United Nations Development Program and funding from the Green Climate Fund, a project titled Safeguarding Rural Communities and the Fiscal Assets from Climate-Induced Disasters in Timor-Leste. This video and related materials are funded by the project. Government entities involved in the project include the Secretariat of State of Environment under the Coordinating Minister of Economic Affairs as the implementing partner, along with the following entities as responsible parties, Ministry of State Administration, Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries, Ministry of Public Works and the Secretariat of State of Civil Protection, companies Antea Belgium, part of the Antea Group, EBD Global Optimum of Rio de Janeiro and the NGO Hivos at timor -Lashi are the joint venture of service providers for the assignment titled Comprehensive Climate Hazard Mapping and Risk Assessment and Development of a Risk Model for timor -Lashi under the mentioned project.